story today. Uh, and just to recap very briefly, and we're going to bring in our chief Washington correspondent, James Rosen, to help me do that. Uh, James, no doubt you were watching and listening. And Josh Ernest says that the $400 million is actually money Iran had put into an account in 1979 for military equipment that was never rendered because the Shah at that time was overturned. And so because he was ousted, that money sat in the bank all this time, I, I, would, I guess, um, which is interesting, too, because I understand that the $400 million was paid in foreign cash. So did it sit in the bank in what currency? There are a lot of questions, my friend, and you've been on the story very closely today. I'm interested first to get your take. Well, Harris, good afternoon. Yeah, what you just heard from the White House Press Secretary, Josh Ernest, is essentially the administration's line here, uh, that even though so many different things regarding Iran were taking place more or less at the same time, they weren't all necessary. There's KNR issues and extortion issues, and so we're, we, we understand to some degree how this process works. It doesn't matter what we call it. It doesn't matter whether we call it a coincidence. Uh, it, it matters what the other side believes and how they perceive it and how they explain it to their people and the Iranian regime perceives it as a ransom and that's how they explained it to their people they said we let these people go look what we got and so that's the important part here so the the healthy um, skepticism in all of this that would say well would it matter what it took to get Americans back what would you say to that I mean we, we wanted those Americans mm -hmm. home of course they had been languishing some of them for a very long time so then comes that other healthy skepticism of why then on the very weak day of an Iran deal going through why then right well because it was part of the the structured deal that the Iranians insisted on and the problem but with that would be well, the problem is uh, the perception of paying for hostages. Look, you know, other governments do it. A lot of other governments we do it. We say we don't do right. it. Josh Ernest just said we don't do it. Right. But uh, well, my point being is it's a common practice around the world, both for governments and for private organizations. Are we changing? In particular, news And, and now more common because we've obviously paid a ransom for these four individuals, and it, three more people mm -hmm. have been arrested in Iran who are just Iranian Americans. Right. That's not including who um, people who have dual citizenship from other nations. Right. Can I just hit on a few things? Things. In terms of what Iran has been saying since this payment was made, basically in under the cover of night on an unmarked cargo plane, pallets of euros and Swiss francs that we had to work with the um, central banks in Switzerland and Holland in order to put all this money together. So that's number one. The Iranian negotiators on the prison exchange said that they wanted the cash to show that they had gained something tangible. And the cash landed as soon as the Americans left Iran. And and the Revolutionary Guard commanders boasted that America had succumbed to Iranian pressure. Absolutely. Substantial yeah. in the sense of they were already getting so much money. They were already allowed to do more with their oil revenue. I, I don't understand. Why and do they need $400 I, I, million? Dollars, I want to add. The equivalent so, to it. Well, because they have no access to kind of the world banking system. Uh, it, well, they do now with the sanctions being relieved, but certainly not American dollars. I want to push back on something Josh Ernest said. Listen, he acts like this is money that was due Iran. This was well, this was a, this was a case that was in front of, of the Hague, the international court. This is a settlement right. that the Obama administration negotiated. There's another two billion dollars that Iran wants that's in New York banks. And you what the Supreme Court said no, that money goes to victims of Iranian right. funded terrorism. Well, you know, so, well and here's, at least in here. well, so, yeah. why should we believe anything that the Obama administration is saying in the first place? Ben Rhodes, uh, deputy national security advisor, has already brought about deceiving the media, deceiving the public. So why should we believe anything that they say in the first place? Secondly, this is consistent with the Obama administration's uh, theme on foreign policy and outlook on foreign policy of alienating our friends and bringing our enemies closer, befriending our, our enemies. I mean, look, Iran is a country whose openly supreme leader has said death to America, and yet we reward them with $100 billion. This is the largest state sponsor of terrorism since 1984, yet we allow them and essentially set them up to get a nuclear weapon in the next decade. Uh, this is the consistent with the President Obama, the, the Obama administration's policies, which is very troubling. So many things that, yeah. that, that Josh Ernest has said, uh, I apologize, are, are require pushback, like you said. One of them being this idea that somehow we know how they're spending their money. We don't know how they're spending their money. That's an absurd yeah. statement. It's like saying we're, we're probably say. vetting all the refugees that are well, pouring out We have a hard Syria. time with our own government trying to figure out where the dollars are going. There's no so way I, we're going to be able to track disingenuous where anyway. this money goes. I mean, this is like the plot out of a really bad movie. Movie, putting money together in a plane to be sent on overnight. No rational person thinks this wasn't ransom. We're funding terrorism. 